Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tempe City Council regular council meeting at the Harry E. Mitchell Government Center. Item number one is called to order. Members of the public who attend the meeting physically are asked to maintain distance between other parties and masks are optional for all attendees per City of Tempe policy. Alternatively, members of the public may attend the meeting virtually through Cisco WebEx events by visiting tempe.gov slash council meeting info for more information. Council meetings can also be watched in real time via Cox Cable Channel 11 and at tempe.gov slash channel 11. I'd like to invite everyone who's willing and able to please stand and join me for a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Um, is Council Member Navarro available this evening? Right. No, not yet? OK, well, then I'm going to ask then. Uh, Councilmember Chin, can you assist me with the meeting minutes this evening? I would be happy to, Mayor. All right, so uh, I, we're going to go to item number 4A, approval of City Council meeting minutes. Councilmember Chin. I would like to submit for approval, move for approval, item 4A, A, 4A1. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember Chin and seconded by Councilmember Keating. Please, uh, please vote. Council Member Hodge? Jason Hodge. Okay, and that item passes five to zero with Vice Mayor Adams and Council Member Navarro absent. Next up, item 4B, acceptance of board commission and committee meeting minutes. Council Member Chin. Mayor, I would like to submit for acceptance items 4B1 through 4B6. It's, it's been moved by Council Member Chin and seconded by Council Member Keating. Please vote. And that item also passes five to zero with Vice Mayor Adams and Council Member Navarro absent. Next up is item five. Five A is Mayor's Reports and Announcements. I'm going to call upon a representative from Keller Williams, Arizona Realty, for a presentation. I'll go on down. Thank you for having us today. We just wanted to take a moment. My name is Kiana Comer. I am from Keller Williams, Arizona Realty. We've got multiple brokerages here in town and we are from the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee. We just wanted to take a moment to recognize Mayor Woods for all of the initiatives that he's doing throughout the city of Tempe um, around diversity, equity, inclusion, most importantly, inclusion. We look to find thought leaders in DEI throughout the communities here in town. And Corey Woods, Mayor, we just want to thank you for everything that you're doing and show extreme gratitude. Uh, we definitely look to you as one of our thought leaders out there, helping to move this diversity, equity, inclusion needle throughout the community. So thank you, and we want to present you with an award. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I would like to just really quickly thank Keller Williams. I really appreciate this. Um, you know, it really means a lot to me. DEI is something that's really critically important, not just to myself, uh, but to the entire city council. Uh, I frankly also want to recognize our uh, new chief diversity officer, uh, Valisa, Dr. Valisa Humes, who's here as well. There she is. And I want to see, too, for this photo, uh, if the council could join me and if Dr. Humes could join me up here as well, because I always talk about when we're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, it's not just simply one person. I'm fortunate enough to be the mayor, but it frankly is a team effort that involves all members of city council and staff. So just wanted to once again say thank you to Keller Williams for this award. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate all of your service. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.
Thank you again to Keller Williams. You know, we talk about all the time, you know, DEI is something here at the city of Tempe uh, that's not just simply about one department. It really is an approach that we take when it comes to every department and everything we do here in this community. So I want to thank Keller Williams again uh, for recognizing the great work that the city of Tempe, uh, and once again, not just our city council, but our entire staff, and uh, does each and every day and recognize Dr. Humes for the work that she's doing to continue to carry that message forward. So thank you so much again. Next up, item 5B, City Manager's Reports and Announcements. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Speaking of Dr. Humes, I will now, uh, under 5B1, invite her to come forward uh, to present on Cities Empowered Against Sex Exploitation, or CEASE, training, an opportunity for our uh, city organization to participate in. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Dr. Belisa Hume, your Chief Diversity Officer here at the City of Tempe. We have this wonderful opportunity to bring this very much needed training to our workforce. But I wanted to give you an idea or give you some background as to how we got here today. During the October 11th Human Relations Commission meeting, the commissioners and chair, Dr. Hugo Tapia, voted 9-0 to recommend to the Tempe Mayor and Council and City Manager's Office to take steps to become a C City. I'd like to take a moment to recognize Chair Dr. Hugo Tapia, as well as Rabani Fergwan and Melissa Farley. Could you stand? So these are our commissioners from the HRC and they're here today um, to help me with this presentation. So thank you for lifting me up back there. The Arizona CEASE Network is a collaboration of pioneering cities committed to reducing sex spying. This action oriented network is dedicated to innovating, testing and sharing strategies with a proven impact. It is designed to deter people from buying sex in many major metropolitan areas. The learning from these cities will create a blueprint for reducing demand at the local level while fueling a national movement to end sexual exploitation in the United States. To be designated as a C city, 75% of our city staff must participate in the C cities training designed to empower our employees by teaching them how to identify and report human trafficking. To sustain this designation, training must be incorporated into new employee training. The city manager instructed staff to move forward on the HRC recommendations. Since then, diversity, equity, and inclusion, human resources, employee development, neighborhood services, and the Tempe police have partnered with C cities to provide this training to our employees and be designated as a C city. Training is provided in online 30-minute sessions or in-person 60-minute sessions or can be customized by department upon request. I'm here to let you know that over 90% of our workforce will participate on the online training. Oh, and I think I need to mention that the training is free. I thought that would, yeah, especially during the, during the holiday season. Ooh, it's free. Um, lastly, during the regular council meeting held October 20th, Human Services Manager Kristen Charlot shared that the average age of someone trafficked, trafficked, trafficked for sex in the nation was 15 years old. However, in Arizona, it, they're 13, two years younger than the national average. The training offered by Arizona CEASE will include information about victim services offered by human services, as well as specific reporting options offered by our police department. Hopefully, the additional boots on the ground offered by the City of Tempe employees will help to do our part in reducing and ultimately, ultimately eliminating human trafficking. I stand before you and it pleases me to provide you the information about this very essential resource that we will be providing for our workforce. Do you have any questions for me? 
Thank you so much, Dr. Humes. We'll look to Council Member Keating. Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, welcome to the city again. Uh, and I will set up that lunch. I did see that, that you emailed me. So thank you. I, yep, absolutely. Um, I just want to thank you for this. This is uh, an issue that's important to me, and I certainly hope that um, our staff takes the opportunity to engage in that training as we come up on on the Super Bowl, on the Waste Management Open, on Barrett Jackson. We have the Final Four next year, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I certainly hope that we hit that 75% level and, and get that certification. Well, we've kept that in mind, so we're prepared. We're preparing to roll this training out by January 1 okay. so that we can get, start to get ready and put this on our, our employees' minds in time for the Super Bowl. But I'd like to give credit to the HRC and the police department who actually came together and, and did this presentation and made this recommendation. So. Well, I think I think it's fantastic, and thank you. I always resist taking trainings from the city. In fact, I get I get two reminders of some training I was supposed to take three years ago. Uh, but but it's an IT training. It's it's like again, don't open puppy videos from unknown senders. But I, I will definitely be taking this training and thank you. And, and advocating that um, you know those around me do as well. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Councilmember Keating, Councilmember Hodge. Thank you so much. Um, I too will be taking the training. I'm excited to do it. Uh, my question is, um, I know that this is just for the city, but is there any way that we can spread this to the school districts? Because most of the human trafficking and stuff that happens, happens to our kids in our schools. So is there any way that we can advance this out to the districts for maybe employees can get this also, or just kind of share this information with them? You know, the municipal training aspect that um, CIS Arizona provides actually came as a result of municipal workers from a city attending this training for hotels and restaurants. And so they made the request of CIS Arizona to tailor something for municipalities, and that's how it's here today. So they're very, very receptive to any agency who would like to bring this training in, and I would more than welcome the opportunity to work with your assistant to make those connections with the school district and CIS. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you, Council Member Hodge. Any other council members, comments? Sounds good. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank Great you for job. the opportunity. Thank you. That brings me to item number six, public appearances. Mr. Mayor. Oh, yes. Just, I have a couple so, of items. Sorry about that. I know. They, I only saw one. So They're on schedule, <laughs> but I do appreciate the indulgence. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have with us here today, uh, in his first week on the job, our new IT director, uh, Jared Morris. There's Jared. Please stand. Jared just started this past Monday. He joins us from Vio Metro Transit in San Antonio, correct? Uh, where he was chief technical officer overseeing the IT security, application development, project management, network management, and customer service for 36 million riders in one of the largest cities and largest transit operations in the nation. He also supported a large-scale deployment of a Cisco network and its transition to cloud-based infrastructure, resulting in passing Department of Homeland Security and state audits with zero critical issues. That's a big deal. He also has a strong passion for innovation, as exemplified through his experience in planning and developing data strategies for a $500 million cancer genome atlas project, which was at the time under the direction of Vice President Joe Biden. So he brings a wealth of experience. Uh, he brings uh, his great time and talent here to back to the state of Arizona, and we're very happy to have Jared on board. So thank you, Jared. Last but not least, on a very sad note, I wanted to uh, just give me a second here. Oh, good. We have the, the slide up. Uh, sadly, one of our city, longtime City of Tempe custodians, Patricia Barragon, passed away this past uh, week uh, over Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, she worked with us here at the city for over 20 years and was a valuable member of our team. She had an outstanding reputation as a hard worker, uh, dependable, focused, a strong work ethic, and I know that her uh, coworkers will miss her as an employee. Uh, they've described her as inspirational, generous, considerate, reliable, but far more than her work ethic, we will miss her smile and we'll miss her laugh. laugh. She wasn't afraid to stick up for herself and others. She had an amicable and respectful relationship with everyone she knew, but she treated those close to her with an abundance of love and kindness. She was a dedicated mother and supportive daughter, and she was a really good friend 
to all that knew her at the city of Tempe. Her passing is devastating for the team, both physically and spiritually. She will be missed. And if you see in our slide photograph to the right, that's a word cloud uh, that was created out of uh, comments that were made over the course of the last week uh, from her coworkers in uh, the custodian, the custodial section, describing all of the things that they that she meant to them. Um, we will miss her very much, uh, and we wish nothing but uh, peace, comfort, and and certainly sympathies go out to her family. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Really appreciate that. Next up is item number six, public appearances. According to the Arizona Open Meeting Law, the City Council may only discuss matters listed elsewhere on this agenda for discussion and legal action. The purpose of the open call to the public is to allow individuals to address the City Council on any issue within the jurisdiction of the City Council. No person shall speak more than once, and there is a limit of three minutes per speaker. Speakers present at the podium must state their name and city of residence and provide a speaker card. Members of the public shall refrain from making personal, impertinent, or slanderous remarks and from becoming boisterous while addressing the city council or while attending the meeting. Speakers will be taken first come, first serve in the order in which cards are received. Speakers' visual aids and appearances by phone or recordings are not allowed. Council members are prohibited by state law from taking action on commenting or discussing a matter raised by a member of the public, even if asked to do so by a member of the public, so long as the subject discussed by the speaker is not listed as a specific agenda item for council's consideration for discussion and legal action. At the conclusion of public appearances, the council may ask the city manager to review a matter or place a matter on a future agenda. I only have one card this evening, uh, and it is Andrew Marwick. Please come forward, state your name and place of residence. You have three minutes to address the council. Hello, thank you, Mayor Wood, City Council. I guess you were um, blessed, uh, or whatever you want to say, to have both Commissioner Bettman and Deputy Commissioner Daly here. I don't know if that ever happened in Glendale, so that puts you one step ahead of Glendale in terms of how the NHL looks at the importance of um, an arena in Tempe. Um, I have today, I have a, t I spoke with before, of course, but Today, I put together a top 10 list. I've also been sending quite a few emails to you, Mayor Woods, and to other city council members about the coyotes. I'll continue to do so in more detail than I have here. So today, I have a top 10 reasons against building a coyotes arena and entertainment district in Tempe. NHL hockey has failed in Arizona for 26 years. There was never a year that even came close to breaking even financially. They've sustained approximately a billion dollars in operating losses over those 26 years. Glendale threw the Coyotes after spending hundreds of millions of dollars on their arena and lease agreements and other subsidies to the Coyotes. Um, the Coyotes failed to draw fans even when they played at America West Arena. They said the, that was very conveniently located, but they said the sight lines weren't good, but it was very close to where we are now, very easy to get to. Number seven, the Coyotes were unable to finalize a deal to build an arena at Los Arcos, just three miles north of here in Scottsdale. There was tremendous conflict. There was even an attempt to recall a city council member in Scottsdale about 20 years ago. Number six, Glendale neglected essential city issues like code enforcement for a decade while endlessly debating the Coyotes. Meetings were called on very short notice. It went on for as long as six hours to discuss Coyotes issues. There's, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of issues coming up with this development that's gonna bring you here for a long time. Um, number five, Tempe has plenty of opportunities for developments with far fewer risks than the Coyotes development. There's some things on the agenda later today that would meet that. The Coyotes, number four, the Coyotes Arena and Theater will compete directly with ASU's Desert Financial Arena and ASU Gambage, a historic, of course, um, Frank Lloyd Wright designed arena just down the street here. Number three, with three major league arenas and two dome stadiums in the Valley, the Live Nation and these are gonna be competing vigorously against each other. It's gonna be impossible for any of them to make money on other events. Number two, a development in Priest at Rio Salado would conflict with future operations at Sky Harbor, especially cargo and international flights. Just walking in here, I saw a UPS MD-11 and a FedEx 767 going overhead. Those are big planes. I would not want to live in an apartment with those going so close overhead. And number one, 
there is already a Tempe Entertainment District right over here. It's called Mill Avenue. And the fo your focus should be on keeping that a vibrant area, having an environment where businesses can thrive, and businesses and restaurants can thrive along and near Mill Avenue, along 7th University, all around this area, over on Maple. This, I think, should be the focus of, of an entertainment district. It's, I came here I, 15 years ago. I can give you ago. that 15. I know, I'll wrap it up. Okay. I was here 15 years ago when there was a um, Fiesta Bowl over here, and it was more, a lot more vibrant then than it is today. So I think that should be your focus, is up there, keeping Mill Avenue vibrant. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to address the city council? Please get my attention. All right, seeing none, I'll close that portion of the hearing. And I'll move on to item number seven, which is the consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda will be considered as a group and will be enacted with one motion by the city council unless an item is removed for separate consideration. Members of the public may remove public hearing items for separate consideration. Public hearing items are designated as public hearing item at the beginning of the item title. Council members may remove any item for separate consideration or to declare a conflict of interest. If a council member would like to declare a conflict at this time, the city clerk will provide the council member with the disclosure form. If you wish to speak on a public hearing item, please fill out a speaker card and submit your completed card to the city clerk prior to the agenda item coming forward for council discussion. I will call your name when it is your turn for public comment. The consent agenda this evening is listed as miscellaneous items 7A1 through 7A6, awards of bids and contracts items 7B1 through 7B11, and resolutions items 7C1 through 7C4, with the exception of item 7A5, which was removed from the agenda at the request of tax and license staff. Once again, any item designated as public hearing item can be removed by a member of the public for a separate consideration. Uh, I do have one card here for item uh, 8C1 and 8C2, looks like. Yep. Uh, but if there are any other items that people would like to have removed that are listed as public hearing items, please get my attention now. All right, seeing none, um, Madam Clerk, were there any comments received from the public wishing to address the council on any item? No, Mayor, we have nothing additional. Sounds good. I'll look to my colleagues. Are there any items that you would like removed for separate consideration? 7C3. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councilor Bergarl is asking for 7C3. Any other items, Council? Uh, Councilor Bavar, are you with us? I am. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, so then with that, I'm just going to go ahead and once again read the what we'll be approving here is the consent agenda, miscellaneous items 7A1 through 7A6, awards of bids and contracts, items 7B1 through 7B11, and resolutions, items 7C1 through 7C4, with the exception of 7A5, which was removed by tax and license staff, and item 7C3, which was removed for separate consideration by Councilmember Garland. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Okay, been moved by Councilmember Hodge and seconded by Councilmember Keating. Please vote. Councilmember Navarro? Aye. And that item passes six to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent. Okay. Now moving on here to item 7C3, which was the item that was removed for separate consideration. And that item is to adopt a resolution approving a Green Power Partners Agreement with Arizona Public Service for the purchase of up to 12,700 megawatt hours of renewable energy to advance the Tempe Council goal of achieving 100% renewable energy in city operations by 2050 to a total of 35%. This was moved by Council Member Garland. So Council Member Garland. I'm going to uh, defer to Council Member oh, Chin okay. to speak first. Sure. Sure. Council Member sure. Chin. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Garland. <clears throat> Mayor, I just wanted to point out that this is a great partnership. Uh, I think the city and our sustainability team has been uh, desiring to work closely with a good partner on an, in an initiative such as this. I think this advances our uh, municipal carbon, new uh, carbon neutrality goals, and I hope this becomes a model for other organizations. Wonderful. Simply that. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. 
Councilmember Garland. Okay, thank you. Um, I agree exactly with um, what Councilmember Chin said. Um, the carbon neutrality in the city of Tempe, doing a partnership like this will help us achieve that goal in 2050. The APS partnership also helps Tempe achieve its goal to power 100% of city facilities with renewable energy by 2025. And through this partnership, Tempe will achieve a total of 35% renewable energy in city operations. Um, and I just want to say that again, I, I appreciate the, the partnership also and anything we can do to work with other um, organizations to help the city reduce its reliance on fossil fuels is a good thing. So that's all I want to say. Thank you, Mayor. Sounds good. Thank you, Council Member Garland. Any council members, any further comments or questions? Okay, it's been moved by Council Member Keating. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Hodge. Please vote. Council Member Navarro? Aye. And that item passes six to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent. Next up, we have item number eight, which is the non-consent agenda. All items listed on the non-consent agenda will be considered separately. Agenda items scheduled for introduction and first public hearing will be heard, but will not be voted upon tonight at this meeting. Agenda items scheduled for second public hearing and final adoption will be voted upon tonight. Council members who may have a conflict of interest may abstain from voting on a matter, and the city clerk will provide the council members with the disclosure form at this time. The first section here is item 8A, which is miscellaneous items, bids, contracts, and resolutions. First item is 8A1, which is to adopt a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an intergovernmental agreement between the Tempe Union High School District and the city of Tempe for seven full-time permanent positions for the provision of school-based intervention programming services for the next five years. Council, any comments or discussion? Council Member Hodge. I guess this is for Clarence. Is it, do I have to sustain from this um, or am I allowed to vote on it because it's Tempe Union and I'm a governing board member? Councilmember Hodge, I, I believe if you are on the Tempe board, then you should probably abstain from the vote. Okay, sounds good. All right, any other comments on this item? Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember Garland, seconded by Councilmember Keating. Please vote. Aye. And that item passes five to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent and Councilmember Hodge abstaining. The next item under the section is 8A2, which is to adopt a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an intergovernmental agreement between the Tempe Union High School District and the city of Tempe for five temporary positions for the provision of school-based intervention programming services for one year. Council, any comments or discussion? Yes. I will be abstaining because of a conflict of interest being on the Tempe Union High School Governing Board. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Hodge. Any other further comments or discussion? Would move by Councilmember Garland and seconded by Councilmember Keating. Please vote. Aye. And that item passes five to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent and Councilmember Hodge abstaining. The next item under this section is 8A3, which is to approve one year contract renewals with Dubois Chemical Inc., Hill Brothers Chemical, Cam Group Incorporated, and Thatcher Company of Arizona Incorporated for the purchase of water treatment chemicals for the Municipal Utilities Department. Council, any comments or discussion? Okay, is there a motion? So Moved by Councilmember Keating. Second. Seconded by Councilmember Chin. Please vote. Aye. That item passes six to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent. The next item under the section is 8A4, which is to adopt a resolution authorizing a maximum dollar amount for an individual job order of up to $4.1 million for the purpose of procuring construction services for the US 60 emergency water transmission main repairs, McClintock Drive, project number 320-2022C3. Council, any comments or discussion? So Moved by Councilmember Hodge and seconded by Councilmember Keating. Please vote. Just, just that item passes six to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent. The last item under the section is 8A5, which is to approve a change order allowance to job order number 12 for FPS Civil LLC for the US 60 emergency repairs at McClintock Drive project. Council, any comments or discussion? Been moved by Councilmember Garland. Do I have a second? Seconded by Councilmember Hodge. Please vote. Aye. 
And that item passes five to zero with Vice Mayor Adams and Councilmember Keating absent. The next section on the non-consent agenda is ordinances and items for introduction and first hearing. These items will be read and introduced tonight, but no votes will be taken. The second hearing and vote for these items is scheduled for December 15th, 2022. First item here is 8B, ordinances and items for introduction and first hearing. 8B1 is to introduce and hold the first public hearing to adopt an ordinance for a zoning map amendment and approve a final subdivision plat for the Caliendo residence located at 1100 East Knox Road. The applicant for the zoning map amendment is Birch and Cracciolo, PA, and the applicant for the final subdivision plat is Gilbert Land Surveying, PLC. Is there any presentation on this item or any comments from Mr. LeVake? You good? Good. Do you, presentation? Or do you, you don't have to, but you can if you want. Or I should ask here, is there any, first of all, uh, since the representative is coming forward, is there anyone in the audience who has any comments or questions on this item? Seeing none, council members, do you have any questions on this item? I don't either. It's your choice if you'd like to say something, but if not, no worries either. I was only going to say if you want a presentation, I'll give one. If not, we'll take your, uh, we'll, we'll take it as is. Thank so, you. Sounds good. What if, oh. I think, I, yeah, I think, I think. Oh, you want the presentation? First, first oh, okay. All right. The yeah. Community to be able to see what we're voting on. I think it would be just, it does not be super long winded. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the Council, for your record, my name is Brian Greathouse here on behalf of the Caliendos. Um, this is a very simple rezoning case, which is essentially a lot line adjustment for a single family home. Uh, if it seems complicated, it's only because I didn't describe it well enough. It's a small site that's located east of Rural Road on the north side of Knox Road. Um, essentially, what's going on here is the Caliendos own lot one. The Caliendos had owned lot two on your screens. Uh, the Caliendos sold lot two to the Flores family, and the Caliendos wished to retain the area that's labeled as site and uh, outlined in yellow there. So they want to combine the site into lot one. What that does is it creates um, two different zoning districts on one single family home lot. So it would be a R115 lot and an, a, an agriculture AG zoned lot. So to make those match, it's simply a request to rezone from AG to R115 on that small little portion that will allow the Caliendos to expand their backyard to have a little larger area for their dogs to run around. That's it, thank Sounds you. Sounds good, any comments or questions from council? Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, since there's no other additional comments or discussion on that item, just want to reiterate the second and final public hearing for this item is scheduled for December 15th, 2022. The next item under the section is 8B2, which is to introduce and hold the first public hearing to adopt an ordinance authorizing the abandonment of a water line easement located on the west side of Harl Avenue and north of the Mineral Road alignment. Are there any speakers in the audience wishing to address the city council on this item? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Council, any comments or discussion? Hearing none, the second and final public hearing on this item is scheduled for December 15th, 2022. The last item under this section is 8B3, which is to introduce and hold the first public hearing to adopt an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a development and disposition agreement with the Tempe Coalition for Affordable Housing Incorporated, a nonprofit corporation, for vacant city owned property located at 1014 East Curry Road, Tempe, in order to convey property, covenants, deeds, and other related documents necessary to affect such conveyance and related transactions. <coughs> Council, uh, any comments or questions? All right. Uh, is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council on this item? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and want to reiterate, second and final public hearing on this item is scheduled for December 15th, 2022. Next up here, items for second public hearing and final, and final adoption. These items were read and introduced on November 3rd, 2022, and votes on these items will be taken this evening. First item here, 8, 8C, ordinances items for second hearing and final adoption. 8C1 is to hold the second and final public hearing to adopt an ordinance for a zoning map amendment from GID to MU4, a planned area development overlay, and approve a development plan review consisting of 308 units, including four live work units and 3,069 square feet of commercial use for Perry and Rio Salado, located at 1891 East Rio Salado Parkway. The applicant is Gamage and Burnham, and I see Manja Labas from Gamage and Burnham in front of us. Good evening. 
Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council, for your record. Manjula Vaz, law firm of Gamage and Burnham, uh, made a presentation last week, so I certainly won't make another one unless you'd like one. I just wanted to say, um, I've had the opportunity to talk to Council Member Garland. We talked a little bit about parking at the same time. Um, I've had some time to talk to Brianne and Braden um, in relation to Council Member Hodge, Councilman Chin's comments and, uh, regarding solar, and I'll be working with them as they're putting together, as you know, a, an ordinance relating to EV chargers and solar. So we're meeting to kind of work through that. And as certainly the solar technology is changing, we are going to work with them and try to make sure that we have solar technology as part of our EV chargers. So I just wanted to report back on that that we discussed a couple of weeks ago. With, with that, good. I'm happy to answer any questions. Councilman Burkitti. I just want to say thank you, Ms. Vaz, for, for the work around the solar and the, the EV parking and you know, they, colleagues asked you for something and you delivered and it makes these kind of processes so much easier and pleasant. So I really appreciate you doing that. So oh, with that, you. I move to approve. Okay, uh, really quickly, actually, I've got to take public comments. Oh. So, okay, perfect. Anyone else uh, on the council, any comments or questions for Ms. Vaz? Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I have one speaker on this item who's registered. It's uh, Andrew Marwick. Please come oh, forward. Oh. Well, State your well, name, place of rent. You have three minutes to Andrew address Mar the council. Thank you, Mayor Woods and City Council. Andrew Marwick, Phoenix. Um, one of the issues, I've looked at the pluses and minuses of this development. It fits in pretty well with the developments along the further east along the south side of Rio Salado Parkway. The only issue I, one of the two issues I have with it is 1.2 miles from where we are now according to Google Maps, which is pretty far to walk, so it will make it pretty car dependent out for getting out that far. Out Hardy seems to be pretty far west in Tempe for walking. Um, it includes, I believe, 455 parking spaces, so again, about 1.5 units per, spaces per unit. So it's, again, that indicates it's pretty car dependent. Um, it's also adding a lot of parking spaces. I just noticed that ASU is putting up a huge parking garage at um, 10th and Mill. So again, this, all these developments like this one, ASU, there's a, just an incredible amount of parking. I don't know how many tens of thousands of parking spaces there are in this part of Tempe. It's a lot. And this adds another 455. So again, it makes it less attractive to have um, transit or walking if so much parking is available. Um, one thing is that I was looking at is I used to work out at Pure Fitness about 15 years ago at Rural and University, a Rural and Baseline, I mean, correction. And now I notice that that's now a nice apartment complex. So I think Tempe in general has done a pretty good job of putting up these apartment buildings like this. There's been a lot of them. There's a lot more that are under construction. A lot more have been approved. So I think this will fit in pretty well with what Tempe has done. So the pluses and minus of it, I think this is a pretty good development and will be helpful in the long run for Tempe and the kind of thing that's been working pretty well here in Tempe. So I just wanted to pretty much give my opinion on this development. So I think, again, this I think is going to work well for Tempe. Thank you, Ms. Mark. We really appreciate it. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to address the City Council on this item? If so, please get my attention. All right, seeing that, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Council, any other further comments or discussion? Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember Keating and seconded by Councilmember Hodge. Please vote. Aye. And that item passes six to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent. Thank you so much, Ms. Boz. Appreciate it. The next item under the section is 8C2, which is to hold the second and final public hearing to adopt a resolution for a general plan projected land use map amendment from public open space to mixed use for approximately 1.66 acres, projected density map amendments from no density to high density for approximately 1.66 acres and from medium to high density to high density for approximately 3.39 acres, Adopted ordinance for a zoning map amendment from GID RSOD to MU4 RSOD for approximately 5.04 acres, a planned area development overlay to establish development standards, and a development plan review for a new seven-story mixed-use development consisting of 319 dwelling units and commercial use on 5.04 acres for Madera Rio Salado, located at 835 West Rio Salado Parkway. The applicant is Barry Riddell, LLC. 
I see Wendy Riddell coming up. Good to see you this evening. Good to see you as well, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Wendy Riddell with the law firm Barry Riddell, 6750 East Camelback. Um, I think the hardest part of this case was reading all of that for the <laughs> hearing tonight. Um, we obviously have given a presentation on this case as well. I was um, fortunate to have a little bit of follow-up with Councilwoman Garland. Um, I do believe the other question was asked by Councilman Navarro about the balcony sizes, and we have um, taken that into account too, with the average size being about 72 and then ranging all the way up to 100 square feet as our balcony. Um, happy to give a full presentation, um, but I recognize we've had a couple of long council meetings already. So I'm happy to <laughs> Whatever do you also mean. keep it short. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ms. Friedel. Uh, anyone else? I know we've had a presentation previously. Does anyone on the council want another presentation? Okay. Sounds good. Let me go ahead and open it up to the public hearing portion then for a brief second. I've got one card for this item, and the uh, card is here from Andrew Marwick. Okay. This, is, this is one I spoke to before I got this, so that'd be cool. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so thank you, sir. Appreciate that. All right, is there anyone else in the audience wishing to address the council on this item? If so, please get my attention. All right, hearing none, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Council members, any further comments or discussion? Been moved by Councilmember Hodge and seconded by Councilmember Keating. Please vote. Aye. And is Vice Mayor Adams available? No, she is not. She's not? Okay. Then that item passes six to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent. And I should say, oh, that was there were two votes here, excuse me. That was the first vote, which was just for the general plan, projected land use map amendment, and projected density map amendments. So I just wanted to make sure that I, I cited that for the record. And that did require a two-thirds city council majority, which is five out of seven. And since there were six people, that does pass. The second vote actually is on the zoning map amendment, planned area development overlay, and development plan review. Is there a motion on those items? Sounds like it's been moved by Councilmember Keating and seconded by Councilmember Garland. This one just requires a simple majority of the council. Please vote. Aye. Uh, Councilmember Keating? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought yes. Uh, and is Vice Mayor Adams available? No, Mr. No? Mayor. Okay. Well, then that item passes six to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent. Thank you so much, Ms. Friedel. Appreciate it. The next item under the section is 8C3, which is to hold the second and final public hearing to adopt an ordinance for a zoning map amendment from AG to AGH Agricultural District with a historic overlay property designation for Guadalupe Cemetery located at 4649 South Beck Avenue to facilitate the designation of Guadalupe Cemetery in the Tempe Historic Property Register. The applicant is the town of Guadalupe. Does council need a presentation on this item? No. no. Okay, sounds good. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the city council on this item? If so, please get my attention. Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Council, any additional comments or discussion? So moved. Been moved by Council Member Hodge and seconded by Council Member Keating. Please vote. Aye. And that item passes six to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent. The next item under the section is 8C4, which is to hold the second and final public hearing to adopt an ordinance amending Chapter 2, Article 2 of the Tempe City Code relating to officers and employees by updating the deputy city manager roles, including adding a chief deputy city manager and an assistant city manager by amending Chapter 2, Article 3 relating to departments by establishing the Communication and Marketing Office, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office, Education, Career, and Family Services Office, and Government Relations Office, and renaming the Human Services Department to the Community Health and Human Services Department, and the Strategic Management and Diversity Office to the Strategic Management and Innovation Office, and by amending Chapter 2, Article 5, relating to boards, commissions, etc. Anyone in the audience wishing to address the City Council on this item? I would be shocked. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Council, any comments or discussion? So moved by Council Member Keating. Second. Seconded by Council Member Hodge. Please vote. Aye. That item passes six to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent. 
The next item under the section is 8C5, which is to hold the second and final public hearing to adopt an ordinance to transfer a portion of the unencumbered budget appropriation from the Human Services Department to the Education, Career, and Family Services Office to provide sufficient budget appropriation to enable this new office to perform its various functions. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the City Council on this item? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Council, any comments or discussion? So moved. Moved by Councilmember Hodge. Second. Seconded by Councilmember Keating. Please vote. <laughs> and that item passes six to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent. The last item under the section is 8C6, which is to hold the second and final public <laughs> hearing to adopt an ordinance to transfer a portion of the unencumbered budget appropriation from the city manager's office to the diversity, equity, and inclusion office, the government relations office, and the communication and marketing office to provide sufficient budget appropriation to enable these new offices to perform their various functions. Anyone in the audience wishing to address the city council on this item? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Council, any comments or discussion? Been moved by Councilmember Hodge. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Garland. Please vote. Bye. Bye. And that item passes six to zero with Vice Mayor Adams absent. <coughs> that moves us to item number nine, current events, council announcements, and future agenda items. I will call upon council members this evening for their comments. Uh, and this evening, looks like we will be starting with Councilmember Chin. Excellent. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we're starting with an announcement. There it is. The next Sustainability and Economic Vitality Council Committee will be on Monday, December 12th here in Council Chambers, or you may attend virtually and participate via WebEx. During that meeting, we'll have an update on the streetcar, pool, cool pavement initiative, and a final review of the committee work plan. And you can also access information online from the city website. The next announcement is I would like to congratulate the city of Tempe kickball team. I don't see, apparently the audience is still outside that wants to meet the kickball team. I'd like to have a, I, I'd like to give a special shout out to our team manager and our lead coach, Sean Wagner. Um, I don't appreciate how many laps he made us run. Uh, there were no major injuries to report this season. We were all very excited to participate in this, uh, the season that was organized and coordinated by the Downtown Tempe Authority. And it was great to meet several other Tempe organizations that had teams. It was a, uh, we are taking signups for next season. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Chin. Uh, next up is Councilmember Garland. I have a few. So the first one I have is Tempe Center for the Arts. You guys can see what's going on outside if you are in chambers. Um, it is, uh, starts tomorrow. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's 10 a.m. to 5.30. There's artwork. There's great Christmas gifts. That's what my list is going toward tomorrow. And there's food and music and lots of fun. So I hope that you can come out and join um, that one. The other one is the Boat Parade. So the Boat Parade is going to be coming up on December 10th. It is so much fun to see the Boat Parade. If you haven't been out there, you really need to go out there and try that. The parade starts at 6 um, p.m. The photos with Santa is going to be there at 7, and fireworks are at 8 o'clock, and that's always a lot of fun. Hope you can come out there for that one. And then I have the other one is um, Second Sundays. Um, it's a smaller version of the Tempe Arts Fair, but it's starting up again, and the first one's going to be December 11th. Um, it starts at 10 a.m., um, and it goes to 3 p.m., and that's also a lot of fun, food, arts, um, and music, and that's really great. And then I have, I don't have a slide for this one, so don't have to worry about this one, Eddie. Um, so I just want everybody to mark their calendars. Um, we just scheduled our next backstage pass. It's gonna be at the Tempe Library, and um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna be able to get into some little, some really cool areas of the library, learn about some of the activities that they have, um, learn about their volunteering um, opportunities that you might be able to have if you get out there. They've got some great programs. Get a, um, a library card. Um, the really fun thing, it's going to be so it's Saturday, January 21st, and it's going to be at 10 o'clock in the morning. So one other fun note is that um, a front, my friend, 
Dave Muncie. He's a Emmy Award winning um, weatherman from this, um, who lives in Tempe. He's going to come and he's going to talk about his, the two books that he wrote. So he's going to be there first. Muncie Business is absolutely hilarious. His small town, South Dakota, North Dakota, he's going to get me for this one because I can't remember. I think it's South Dakota. Um, growing up to being a weatherman out here, he's, he's very, very funny. And the other one is he's got a kid's book called um, Lance Fart Pants. So there you go. Probably the only council member ever in history to say fart on the dais. But there you go. That's the name of his book. Um, it's going to be really fun, but he's going to come out there. So adults, kids, come out and um, listen. Again, it's um, Saturday, January 21st, and it's 10 o'clock in the morning. And I hope you guys can join us. Thank you, Councilor Garland. I was waiting all night for you to read that book title. So, <laughs> um, Next up, I have Council Member Hodge. Thank you. Our first thing I just wanted to highlight that on Friday, the 20, November 25th, we had our uh, downtown holiday streets uh, parade and the lighting, and we all, draw, we all drove our carts, and no one wrecked anywhere, and we did a really cool job with that, and it was a fun time. It was a really great time, and I want to thank Kate Borders for all that she did to, to um, make that successful. And next, uh, just uh, no, just yesterday, I was at the I was invited to the roundtable discussion with the Swiss ambassador. Um, and what's most important is because he actually was in our city. He was at a SRP uh, facility, so we will. I gave him a real Tempe welcome, and um, he's excited and he wants to come back and and have more discussions about what we what partnerships we can do in Tempe and businesses. So. That's here to come. And um, a few weeks ago, I went on a tour of Tempe. I did the pre-K program. I went. I got a chance to visit four of our pre-K classrooms and enjoyed um, the fun with our kids, how much they're learning, um, the wonderful teachers we have. And Naomi Farrell, she took me around, and it was a phenomenal time. So if anybody gets a chance, um, please go out and visit our pre-K program. It is, um, it's doing very well, and our kids are striving extremely well. And <clears throat> December 3rd is my next Breakfast with Berdetta, and with that Breakfast with Berdetta, it's going to be all around public safety and public health, especially around the holidays. I'm going to, um, and with the Super Bowl coming up and everything else with the Super Bowl and um, the uh, water waste uh, golf tournament, I would love for um, our safety with our, our chief of police and our assistant um, fire come out and CARE 7 and the HOPE team come out and have a discussion around table around that. So it's um, December 3rd, which is this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11.30. So if anybody would like to come, you don't even, if you register, that would be great. We would love you to register, but just show up if you don't register. Please come on out. Thank you. And also, last but not least, Myself and uh, Councilmember Keaton had our rec uh, meeting this uh, past Monday. It was a great one. We had it um, around the library, and it was uh, we got a really in-depth um, conversation around that. So that's it. Thank you, guys. And everybody have a happy rest of their week. Thank you, Councilmember Hodge. Next up, Councilmember Keating. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I would like, though she may, though she is named after one of the most evil characters in fiction, <laughs> I would like to wish my dog, Cersei, a happy seventh birthday. I cannot, I cannot mm. believe I've had her for seven years. Oh, she was uh, a very spirited pup, to say the least, but uh, she's grown in to be a, a fantastic dog, and I love her very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. You can see pictures of her. She's very cute. Oh. Uh, she's basically, she's a pit bull chihuahua mix. I have several jokes on how that happened. None of them are appropriate for this meeting. <laughs> but uh, she's basically a, a 45 pound chihuahua. So she's, she's a handful, but, but, but she's my baby. So happy birthday, Cersei. I'll be home soon. Yeah. Thank you, Councilor Burkitti. Next up, uh, Councilor Burkitti, do you have any announcements? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I do have one. If it's on the screen, let me know. Yep. Okay, so uh, this uh, next Wednesday, December 7th at 5.30 p.m. at the Watermark in Tempe, that's the 
high rise building that's across the north side of the lake uh, that has been developed. We're going to have a sit down discussion at that uh, um, building and actually have a great view, not only of the building itself, but also the um, what the development has done around Tempe Town Lake. And we're going to basically talk about uh, more potential economic ideas uh, that have future or future plans that we have for the lake and really just kind of uh, showcase the attractions that we have there and just listen to the uh, audience that might attend. And I know we have some people that are planning on attending and we would love to have anybody who would love to come out, but just to kind of like voice your opinion and concerns and also the ideas of what we want to do with our Tempe Town Lake as we start uh, developing uh, in and around the lake and uh, how that's going to affect um, not only us, but uh, even tourism, but also the residents. So we want to make sure that we have everybody's opinion out there. Please come December 7th at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Councilor Navarro. Appreciate it. That leaves me. I've just got a couple of quick announcements. So I will say, honestly, one of the best parts of the mayor's job is when you actually get feedback from residents uh, that tell you that they're exceptionally proud to be residents of the city of Tempe and let you know about their very positive experiences with many of our employees. So we have a longtime resident and a friend to all of us here on this council, Catherine Mayorga, who wrote to me this week to share her experiences with a few employees as well as a council member. She mentioned that it had been a really difficult year with caring for her ailing mother and her passing. The stress of that was magnified by some issues in her neighborhood with rental property behaviors as well as disputes. She first reached out to Councilmember Navarro just for assistance, and she was genuinely pleased with the way then staff got involved to address and correct the issues, and they communicated with her every step along the way. And that is one of the most critical things around here. It's not about just simply getting the work done, but it's also having conversations with the residents to let them know exactly where things currently stand in the process. And it's one of the things our Tempe employees are so exceptional at doing. They're not only technical experts, but they also very much care about each and every person who lives in this city. And on behalf of Catherine Mayorga, I wanted to make sure to recognize the professionalism and kindness of Assistant Police Chief Andre Anderson, Community Development Director Jeff Tamulevich, Chief Deputy City Manager Rosa Nchowski, and of course, on the phone this evening, Councilmember Joel Navarro. And to quote something that Catherine said directly to me, these people are gems who represent the city with pride and dedication for the good of our community. So to each and every one of them, to, to Chief Anderson, uh, to Jeff Tamulevich, to Rosa Nchowski, and to Councilmember Navarro, just wanted to pass along uh, our longtime resident, Catherine Mayorga's praise of all of the work that you do on behalf of the city of Tempe. So thank you. And my last announcement, I think we have a slide for that one. It is for our soon to be departing chief of staff but who is taking a job as the Assistant Secretary of State for our incoming Secretary of State, Adrian Fontes. I just wanted to read this. Um, he put out a really wonderful announcement about her today. Keely Barbell is, is a veteran government agency administrator, public policy advisor, and political communication strategist. She has a 30-year career spanning both the legislative and administrative branches of government at the local, state, and federal level in Arizona. Beginning her career as a congressional staffer for U.S. Congresswoman Karen English, Keeley went on to work for several years at the Arizona State Legislature for both the Senate and House Democratic Caucuses in various roles including policy advisor, communications director, and chief of staff. Keeley was the deputy director of Governor, Governor, Janet, uh, Governor Janet Napolitano's Office of Children, Youth, and Families, and later was appointed to oversee administration of workforce-related programs and then strategic agency initiatives at the Arizona Department of Economic Security. In addition to her policy and public administration background, Keeley is a seasoned election official, holding a certified elections and registration administrator credential from the National Association of Election Officials and Auburn University. When Adrian Fontes was Maricopa County Recorder, Keeley served as Chief Deputy Recorder and oversaw the operations and management of the Recorder's Office and Elections Department. With over 2.4 million registered voters, Maricopa County is the second largest voting jurisdiction in the entire country. Currently, Keeley is our Chief of Staff. 
but she'll be leaving us soon. I think December 9th is her last day, and we're really going to miss having you here. She's been a wonderful addition to the city staff, but we always love when our employees go on to other things, and this is obviously an incredible appointment. It's the, actually the first appointment uh, by Secretary-elect Fontes. She was chosen by the Arizona Business Journal as one of their 40 under 40 in 2009 and was awarded Best Capital Staffer by the Arizona Capital Times in 2013. She was honored with the Medallion Award by the National Association of Secretaries of State in 2021 for her leadership of the Maricopa County Elections Department during the challenges of the 2020 election. Keeley is also a member of the City of Phoenix Historic Preservation Commission, appointed to the post by Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego in 2022. It's, it's quite a bit, but honestly, she's got a long, distinguished career at the local, state, and federal level, and we're really, uh, we're sad to see her leave here at Tempe City Hall, but she's contributed a tremendous amount during her time here, and we're just really excited to see you become the next Assistant Secretary of State for the state of Arizona. So congratulations, Keely. <laughs> With that, I'm gonna to go to item number 10, public appearances. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the city council? And if so, please come forward and get my attention. Seeing none, we are adjourned at 7.04 p.m., everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend. Way to go,